Question, how do you keep a meatball from drying out when it cooks? Because nobody likes a dry meatball. Okay, they're supposed to be these delicious nuggets of meat, perfectly spiced, seared on the outside, and tender and juicy on the inside. So today I'm gonna to show you two techniques to ensure that you never have to eat another dry meatball ever again. I'm excited, let's go. So this first meatball is an Italian marinara meatball, and it's going to demonstrate the first technique. You start off with one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. Step one is to press down your ground meat to create a little more surface area. And then you'll generously season your meat with some sea salt, some black pepper, and about four or five cloves of crushed garlic. All right, in a separate bowl now, we are going to talk about technique number one which is adding your fillings. You see, these ingredients don't just add flavor, but they help to maintain the moisture level of the meatball. Now you're gonna start off by adding a half a cup of breadcrumbs and a half a cup of beef stock. Now you could also use milk here, but I personally prefer the flavor of beef stock. Then add two eggs. And generally speaking, if you're using eggs, you'll add about one egg per pound of meat. Next, add a half a cup of the cheese of your choice. Here I'm using Romano. Then add about a half a cup of finely diced onion. And finally, about a half a cup of fresh chopped parsley. Now mix everything up well, and using a separate bowl for this is optional. I personally think it helps to not overwork the meat when you add all the ingredients in. Now once everything is well incorporated, go ahead and grab your meat and pour all those ingredients in. Now your best tool for mixing is definitely your hands, so get in there and mix it all up thoroughly. Now once you got that, it's time to form the meatballs. And a little trick here to keep the meat from sticking to your hands is just dip them into some cold water first. Now when you form your meatballs, you want them all to be roughly the same size. I usually shoot for about a little smaller than a golf ball. This just ensures that they all cook evenly. I personally just measure by how it feels and fits into the palm of my hand. But if you want to be more precise, you can use something like an ice cream scoop to ensure that all the meatballs are the exact same size. Now I know some of you are thinking, Jonathan, can I make these meatballs without using breadcrumbs or milk or eggs or any of those ingredients? And the answer is, yes you can. And I'll show you a tip for that after these ones. Now I've got all my meatballs formed, but this is about double of what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a Ziploc bag and I'm going to package these up and I'm going to freeze them. And it's easy since I'm already making meatballs, I might as well make a big batch and freeze these for a convenient meal another time. Just be sure that there's some space between the meatballs so they don't stick together when they freeze. Now I wanna show you that you can get juicy meatballs even without all those extra fillings like the breadcrumbs and the eggs and the milk and the cheese. And ultimately it does come down to the cooking style which is the second technique I'm gonna show you. But first I got this little tip. Now I'm gonna start off the same way but only using one pound of ground beef here create some surface area, and then season with some sea salt, some black pepper, and about two to three cloves of garlic. Then a quarter cup of finely diced onion. And finally, add about an eighth of a cup of finely shredded carrot. You can also use something like shredded apple or sweet potato, but this just helps to add and maintain the moisture in the meatball as it cooks, similar to what the breadcrumbs do, but more of a paleo style. In fact, for about five years, I used to eat and cook paleo style meals. So these meatballs were a go-to recipe for me. So here are our meatballs and you can tell these ones are like half the moisture level of these ones, but let's see how they turn out once we cook them. So get a pan on over medium heat, a little oil in there, and then put in those meatballs, making sure just to separate them enough so that they have some breathing room. And these are gonna sear for about five minutes, which gives us enough time to start our marinara sauce. So get another pan on, put a little oil in there, and then pour in about a half a cup of diced red onion. And we're gonna sweat that down along with about two cloves of crushed garlic. Then pour in one 32 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, along with half a cup of water. Give that a stir and let it come to a simmer. 
Now it's been about five minutes, so our meatballs should be nice and seared on one side. So we're just gonna flip those over. And it's this searing process that helps lock in the juices of the meatball. Now to the marinara, we're gonna add a handful of chopped parsley, one teaspoon of sea salt, some black pepper to taste, one teaspoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of dried oregano. Stir all that together and let it simmer for about three minutes or so. This gives the meatballs enough time to finish their sear on the other side. And once that's completed, go ahead and pull those off the heat. And here is our second technique. We're gonna transfer the meatballs into the marinara sauce and we're gonna let them braise. Simmering in this sauce is what will keep these meatballs tender and juicy on the inside. Now they're gonna braise in that sauce for about eight to 10 minutes, which gives us enough time to start the other meatballs. So we'll get these in the pan and start them searing. Our marinara sauce continues to simmer away, and it's been about five minutes. Let's go ahead and check the sear on these meatballs. They're looking good, so let's flip them over. Now I'm using the same cooking technique for both of these sets of meatballs because I wanna be able to compare the two at the end. Okay, our first set of meatballs is done, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that from the heat. And it's time to cut into one of these bad boys to see if it passes the moisture test. After having all the fillings, the searing, and the braising, I think it's safe to say this first meatball passes with flying colors. But now can the second set of meatballs achieve the same moisture level? Move your meatballs to the edge of the pan to create some space. Add a little oil in the center, then place in four cardamom seeds, one teaspoon cumin seeds, one teaspoon coriander seeds, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, and one half teaspoon of garlic powder. And finally, one tablespoon of pureed lemongrass. Now, if you don't have fresh lemongrass, a teaspoon of fresh ginger would also work here. Toss those spices for just a few seconds and then pour in a cup and a half of beef stock. Stir up the broth and let it come to a simmer. And once that happens, pour in one can of coconut milk. Stir everything together. And again, this second technique is called searing and braising. And it is a fantastic way to cook meatballs. At this point, they're allowed to move freely about the cabin and let them simmer for about eight to 10 minutes and then remove them from the heat. Now let's give these guys the same test as we did the other batch. Slice into it and oh yes, we have maintained maximum tenderness and juiciness. Now to serve these up, first remove the meatballs and then using a colander in a bowl, drain your broth to remove all of these seeds. Then lastly, add the juice of one lime wedge and stir that up. Then get a nice ladle of that spiced coconut milk broth, put it into a bowl and gently place your meatballs inside. And last but not least, sprinkle on top the zest from that lime. And here are some tender, juicy paleo meatballs served in a spiced coconut milk broth. I also have to serve up those marinara meatballs and we'll top them with a little cheese and some chopped basil. And of course, a couple spoonfuls of that marinara sauce. And now both of the meatballs are ready and it's time to serve it up to the children and see what they think. All right, let's taste these meatballs. I'm excited, let's go. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up to this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, now try the other one. Good. Mm -hmm. So which one do you guys like more? I can't say one of them is my favorite. They're both great and good. My favorite one is this one. See you guys next time. So hopefully this has been helpful to you and now you have the confidence to cook and serve meatballs that never have to be dry again. We'll see you next time.